Welcome to our Ideal Gas Law Lab. We are going to use a string, a piece of magnesium, some hydrochloric acid, it's gonna be very concentrated, so we have to be very careful, and just some tap water. We'll need about 50 milliliters of tap water. This glass tube is called a udiometer tube. You're gonna have a big beaker of water that's nearly filled and a thermometer in it. We need to record the temperature of the water. We're assuming the temperature of the water is the temperature of the gas. That thermometer reads to about the half of the degree Celsius. So your temperature should end with a zero or a five. We're gonna get our piece of magnesium and bend it around the string. We don't wanna bend it flat because it could actually snap and break, but we're gonna bend it around the string, kind of like a corkscrew, and then we're gonna tie the string into a knot. I know this sounds weird, but when uh, the magnesium reacts with the acid, there's our final thing. When the magnesium reacts with the acid, it's gonna form a gas. Sometimes the gas will stick to the metal and make it float. So first grab the hydrochloric acid and we're gonna pour it in Notice I have it tilted. We're gonna pour it in until it's about eight or 10 milliliters of this very concentrated hydrochloric acid. The acid's probably about a three or four molar. That's very concentrated. So I have it, eh, I got just above 10. It's not a precise measurement. We're using a large excess of acid. Now with it tilted very low, don't let it pour out. I'm going to pour the tap water in here gently and slowly. I don't really want them to mix. So once I have a good column of water, then I can pour a little faster. So if the rest of it's gonna be water, the acid's more dense, it'll stay in the bottom. I wanna fill it till it's overflowing. This is just water, so if it spills, it's okay. I put the metal right there on the top and put my finger on it so there's no air bubbles. I turn it upside down, keeping my finger on it, and I put it all the way to the bottom before I let my finger off. If the metal falls out, you gotta start all over again. So now I have the piece of metal tied with the string still inside the udiometer tube at the very bottom. Look carefully and you can see what I call swirl patterns. There's a drop on the outside, but inside, as you can see the swirl patterns, those are the different densities of liquids. So now the acid is dropping through the water to the bottom. When it gets to the bottom, it's gonna react. So hopefully it doesn't mix too much and the water actually will float above the acid. You can see the gas bubbles being formed. Magnesium will react with acid to form hydrogen gas. So this is really flammable. Um, so we're collecting the gas in the tube. It starts off slowly and gets faster and faster. So you may be looking and I'm holding it straight up, straight up vertical. I don't want the acid to pour out of the udiometer tube. Here we are kind of fast forwarding through the process. This will take about five minutes and you wanna wait until the, everything's completely reacted. So you see it bubbling and bubbling and bubbling. Again, don't leave the tube at an angle, otherwise the acid will flow out into the big beaker and dilute and the reaction will stop. Our assumption is all of the all of the metal reacted with the acid, that the acid is in large excess. So we have to make sure that all the metal reacts and that we are collecting all the gas. So in a write-up, do you think it all reacted? Do you think we collected all the gas? Based on observations, you know, is this happening? Or did you lose some gas for some reason? Or is there a piece of, small piece of metal still left? Or did the metal float to the top? There's reasons why our assumptions may not be valid. Now, once this thing stops, and again, we're gonna fast forward this a little bit, there'll be a, a water gas level inside the tube. And we have, of course, the atmosphere top of the water outside in the beaker. The water level in the tube, you have to pick it up or push it down so that it's equal to the water level in the beaker. This is important so that the pressure inside is equal to pressure outside. So I had to pick this thing up a little bit. I'm trying to match it and it's a little tough. So you wanna to match the inside liquid and the outside liquid. 